Whether you become a caregiver gradually or suddenly due to a crisis, many emotions surface when you take on the job of caregiver. Caregiver guilt can emerge when there's a belief that you're falling short in any or all of your roles or relationships. Also, families and caregivers frequently may experience guilt associated when selecting a care option for their parent or loved one. Hello, everyone. I'm Cheryl Musial, and welcome to My Care Advisors. In this episode, A New Year Resolution, Addressing Caregiver Guilt, we are joined by Ruthie Barkas. She's a registered nurse who is also a certified dementia professional, certified peer recovery specialist, senior care advisor, and geriatric care manager. Oh, welcome, Ruthie. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm happy to be here. So, Ruthie, let's just jumpstart our conversation by sharing with our audience what is exactly meant by the term caregiver guilt. Sure. So caregiver guilt is the belief that we put on ourselves that we should be able to care for our loved one through the end of life. Everybody has guilt at some point in their life, and guilt is an emotion that anyone caring for a loved one is going to feel at some point in this journey. If anyone takes anything away from this today, it is that you are human. It is a lot to care for someone who is sick, and many times we are juggling a household on top of it, whether it be finances, pets, kids, and it all adds up. So sooner or later, one of those cards is going to tip, and that's when you're going to have to realize that you need to ask for help. I work with a lot of families that are caring for someone with dementia. The problem that I see is that the kids often feel they are going against mom's wishes, that they are failing her in some way, or that if mom really understood what the kids were doing, she would be really mad at them. That's a lot to carry, for sure. But I always tell my families, back in the day, our mothers started programming us without even realizing they were doing it by telling us, don't put me in the home. Well, the home then and the homes now are drastically different, number one. And number two, when your mom said that to you, she was healthy. The situation was completely different. And I'm sure if your mom saw the stress that this was putting on you, she would understand if you needed to ask for help. Well, Ruthie, I'm sure that families are so thankful for your insight. Uh, And so... When thinking about that, what are some of those signs and symptoms of caregiver guilt? The biggest one we see is denial. You know, not really wanting to accept that mom is in this spot or dad is in this condition. Feeling that you are the only one that can care for dad. Finding fault in everything anyone else who's caring for your parents does. There's shame, apprehension, sadness, depression, sleepless nights, lack of eating. One thing we see sometimes after placement is you know, the families will pull mom or dad back out of the communities within days, or they will get rid of the caregiver within days because the guilt just gets to be too much for them to handle. They may have anxiety, um, knowing that this is the best decision, but prolonging the inevitable for fear of judgment by other family members. Ruthie, those are good to know. And it sounds like the signs may vary by person. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So what are some of the few steps that caregivers can take to cope with this caregiver guilt? I think one thing to remember is, first of all, no one is ever going to care for your loved one the way you do. So communication is key so that the expectations are known on both sides. If you educate the caregivers on the things that make mom or dad happy, this will help you to know that mom is sleeping with her favorite blanket at night. Since you took over this role of caregiver, I'll bet you have neglected somebody really important to you, and that would be you. So the first thing I would say is that you need to take care of yourself, eat nutritious meals, exercise, meditate, go to a support group, and talk to your friends who have gone through the same situation. That can be an enormous amount of support. Remember to tell yourself my mom or dad would be proud of my efforts and that you did the best you could and credit yourself for the time you did put into caring for them. Come to terms that you don't have any control over this and that there may not be a perfect solution for everyone but there will be a solution that keeps mom or dad safe. And that's the one you have to go with. Give your loved one time to adapt. Don't rescue them in an effort to rescue yourself. In other words, don't let your mind tell you they are unhappy and you need to get them out of there because you feel guilty. You did not cause their disease process, nor did you do anything to cause it to progress. Sometimes we have to just wave the flag and let the professionals help. Yeah, I really, I really like your thought about waving that flag because as you're right, I mean, it's just, it's that guilt. It sounds like it can really overtake and change everything. 
that, you know, you're really intending to do as a caregiver. It really does. And people have to remember, you know, I always tell them that they weren't being malicious if they were doing what was right. Ruth, you mentioned professionals that may be able to help older adults and caregivers when they are addressing caregiver guilt. So who can they turn to? Well, if you have to put your loved one in a community, the communities are pretty good at running support groups, but otherwise you can check your local chapters, um, sometimes checking in with your chambers of commerce, talking to your hospital liaisons, um, which would be, you know, your social workers if mom or dad were at the hospital or at a skilled nursing, your social workers should be able to help you you know, find resources for those kinds of things. You could talk to the doctor, one of the nurses, um, sometimes a pastor at a church. Those are all really good resources. And talk to your friends because somebody's been through it. These are really great resources to check out locally. And I was wondering as certified senior advisors and senior care advisors, how do they help support caregivers and older adults, especially during these care transitions and also addressing caregiver guilt? Whether it's in the case of dementia or not, when a parent or a loved one falls with a chronic health condition, it affects the entire family. So your care advisors will help you to find the appropriate care options for your loved one. And they will also provide the family with resources that are available to them within the community. So my best advice would be to be honest with them. Let them know what you need, what you're struggling with. We're here to support you through this transition. Well, thank you, Ruthie. I'm sure that you've been able to help so many families personally as with all your credentials and and also as a geriatric care manager. So thank you for sharing these tips and thoughts with us today. And I was wondering, can you suggest some helpful resources that older adults, caregivers, individuals can you know, just review to understand a little bit more about caregiver guilt? Sure. I think alzheimers.org is a great site to go on. Um, we also have Family Caregiver Alliance that we look at that kind of helps people with the caregiving you know, section of things. And then also, you know, I look at the Hospice Foundation of America. They really do help us kind of transition from where we're at to end of life so that we can kind of plan for what's coming down the pipeline, familiarize ourselves. Great, great resources. Thank you, Ruthie. And um, I know I personally have checked out a number of these resources on their websites. And I, I agree. I mean, it's just, it's really important to Just read as much as possible and know that you're not alone in this whole journey of caregiver transition and working with your your parents or your loved ones. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs support. You know, we weren't meant to go through this life alone. Oh, thank you, Ruthie, for joining us today and sharing this important information about the steps that we can all take to address caregiver guilt. It truly sounds like a wonderful resolution that we need to keep throughout the entire year. It really is, Cheryl, because we never know when we're going to find ourselves in that situation. And, you know, we may have placed a loved one and start to feel a little guilty. There's just a huge array of emotions that you might be feeling. So I do encourage if any of the resources that, you know, we previously talked about aren't enough for you, that you reach out and find yourself a counselor or a psychologist to help you navigate through the rest of this journey. Thank you, Ruthie, for sharing this insight, especially how one can recognize and address caregiver guilt. To view resources, show notes, and access more My Care Advisors episodes, visit mycareadvisors.com. You can also subscribe and listen to our podcast on your favorite app. I leave you with this quote from Victoria Giraud. Being honest about our feelings is the best way to begin. Never allow guilt to rule because guilt is a wasted emotion. Choose to be inspired to live the best life every day. Thank you for listening. We are grateful to be your guide.